so five days have already gone by and I hope you are learning new things so this is basics and I am Alok Shrivastava so in day six we will be learning about how to control the services using the system D how you can control your services and demons using the system D and the system CTL commands so as I had uh, in the previous class I have to use my G edit to write down the notes and then you will be seeing also the major points on the left hand side box let's start it what exactly is a system D and when it comes into the picture so this is your RSCE on rel 7 and this is day 6 so controlling your services and demons services and demons using system CPU commands okay so let's first understand what exactly is system D and when it is active when it is activated so if you understand the boot process of the machine when you start your machine the boot process begin with reading the bios right the boot process boot process begin with first the bios got activated i hope you know the full form of bios basic input output system so once the BIOS get activated the first step is that the BIOS will be activated so what after like all the uh, your it scans all the hardware initialization and after all the checks what it does so uh, second is that after completing hardware initialization so after completing the hardware initialize your, your BIOS initialize the hardware and checks what it does your BIOS will load the bootloader right bootloader is loaded In our case, the bootloader is grub. The bootloader is loaded, and the bootloader then further load and access the MBR from the hardware, right? So, bootloader access MBR that is your master boot record on hard disk. So once the MBR is loaded, why I am telling you this? Because I want you to understand what is system D. Because that is the most important thing for you to understand. What is the system D and how system D uses the system CTL commands to control the services and demons. So once the bootloader is loaded from the hard disk, it uses the data there to start the Linux kernel right so bootloader then further starts the Linux kernel so I can write here it uses the data there to start Linux kernel okay so once the kernel is started so system D is the first process system D is the first process started by kernel on rel 7 and because it is the first process the PID is 1 I can show you this if I go here and if you remember this PS3 command that I had shown you in the previous class also see system D is the first process and once the kernel <coughs> excuse me once the kernel starts the system D it is the responsibility of the system D to start all necessary demons background processes and services which are required to make the OS work 
that is the responsibility of the system team that it starts all other services so if i give a ps hyphen ax you can see here i move up the screen the pid of system d is 1 right so i hope you got this point here the system D is the first process that is started by the kernel on rank 7. The PID is 1. And then it is the responsibility of the system D. Then I can write here. System D then starts all the necessary demons. We had talked about the demons in the previous class, right? Background processes. And the services required required to make the OS work right so often these processes they run in the background and they are called demons and they end with a character D so how it's different from the previous versions of rel so system D is what so this is what we had understood the boot process now let's understand what is a simple introduction to system d what is the system d introduction to system d what system d does so system d is actually a system and service manager number one thing system d is a system and service manager so this system D will be used to manage your services like start a service, stop a service, put a service in uh, like uh, mask a service. So system D is backward compatible with a like previous version of RHEL, like RHEL 6 and it is compatible with sysv inner scripts. So I can write here compatible with sysv in its scripts means the previous like rel 6 rel 5 and it gives me features like parallel startup of services at the boot time which is a very interesting feature parallel startup of services at boot time so it reduces the boot time as compared to the rel 6 rel 7 boots much faster and system d introduces a concept of system units it's a new thing system D introduces a concept of system units I'll explain you what is this system units units so these units are actually represented by the configuration file so these units have got their own configuration files I can write here System units are represented by unit configuration files and these files are read in this order they are on the basis of the priority so first priority will be given to the unit files which are under system D system folder I'll show you I'll give you a very interesting example second priority will be given to the system d unit files under run system and the last priority will be given to the unit configuration files inside usr libs system d system so it, these are read in the same order so you should remember this so as you, you can see here at c anything inside the at c means these are the managed by the admin so that's why they have the highest priority managed by admin they have the highest priority so i can put it right here just wait i don't like this and the run the files the configuration files 
which are inside the run system d system these are created at the run time they are created at the run time at run time i need to make it more closer because of the space available to us created at run time and these files are the original files or they contain the files which are installed when you install the package right so these are distributed or say distributed with package installation so the priority will be of at c system d system now the point is what is a unit i don't understand this what is a unit i'll explain you but let's first understand the basic concept so any resource anything that any resource that the system knows how to operate and manage like your operating system knows how to operate and manage say a cd rom how to operate and manage your lan card how to operate and manage a partition any service any process any socket which it is known as a resource so any resource that the system knows how to operate and manage is a unit very simple so these units are defined with the configuration files that i had already shown you these are the configuration files the location of the configuration files so these units are defined using configuration files right and these files are known as unit files i'll show these files so a unit can be used to manage a service as i've told you a network resource a device a file system mount anything so there are different types of units available with you types of, of units like we have a service unit which will be re be responsible for managing the services service units are there then we have got socket units are there path units mount units there are a lot of units but these are the same most common units are these service unit socket but there are a lot of other units which are used so once we have understood that fine the system d is the main service which will be responsible for managing all the services and the demons it is controlled by some files which are known as the unit configuration files so now let's move on to how can i see all the processes and demons which the system d is managing so let's come on to the commands now so i want to see what all the processes and demons the system d is managing on my rel machine just write system ctl and press enter so system ctl is the command which will be used by the system d to manage your services so if i press enter here you can see all the services so see here some of these are your mount these are the unit it's mounting the boot mount service mount unit is mounting my slash boot data so these are our mount mount units then these are service units and it shows the status also loaded active running loaded active exited so these are all the services processes and demons that the system d is managing on my rel machine that's great so it shows you all the units whether it is a service unit or a mount unit 
anything it shows you everything a device unit in case you are interested in seeing only the service units because we might be interested in seeing the only services so you may specify here hyphen hyphen type is equal to service so if you see the change here it shows you only the service units all service units are coming up here no mount unit no socket unit no path unit all service units and if you want to get uh, information about a particular service that whether a particular service is running or not you might be interested in knowing that also like ssh say i intend to know whether ssh service is running or not so i can have a very simple commands also which can uh, like help me so i can give here says something like system ctl status sshd dot service so it tells me that one service is running though service is not mandatory it's optional because if you just write sshd it by default presume it as a service that it is a service so i can press enter both will give me the same result that's great this is very good and there are some very simple commands also say i can give here something like uh, system ctl is active just to find out whether this service is active or not yes it is active so currently it is running then there is one thing something known as enable enable means whether this service will be available after the reboot yes this is available after the reboot also and any point of time you can start a service restart a service see here system ctl i can give a restart sshd dot service so this sshd service will be restarted i can stop a service so at least by the end of this day you should be able to understand the importance of system d and you should be able to start a service stop a service check the status of the service manage the services you should be able to do all these things so small for stop so if i again give is active it says inactive very true and if i give system ctl status sssd it says it's not it's inactive it's dead fair enough so i can start a service also just replace the stop with start it started so is active will be active and the status will be enabled so you can give these small commands normally we don't do a restart in the production environment in case you have done some configuration changes we normally do a reload so reload the the service without interrupting any normal functionality so we can use reload instead of using a restart then i had already explained you how to enable means enable a service means that the service should be available across the reboots please remember this enable system ctl enable ssd it's already enabled here so please make sure you give this command if you want to make it a disable just change it to disable see here it's disabled so yeah, now i can give enable so once i make it enable that means this service will be available across the reboots which is very important and in case i want to know all unit files those are active i can very simply give a very simple command system ctl list units c or all the unit files and system ctl also gives me uh, like some some of the very uh, like interesting commands or the features that say when i start i'll just give you one simple example when i am starting ssh so i will be giving this simple command system ctl start ssh right 
I will be giving this command system CTL start sshd dot service or say httpd dot service right httpd dot service I will be giving only this command but there might be other units which the system D will try to start for httpd for sshd so I can get all these things also so if I give this command system CTL list dependencies very interesting say httpd dot service as the d is coming up here that means it's a daemon so see here that means if i start httpd service uh, you will start only httpd service but list dependencies will, will show that which units which other units the system d will try to activate when you are trying to start this unit so these units will be activated whenever you will try to start the HTTPD. So I can use the same command for SSHD. So it shows me the dependencies. So it will start the key service to generate the key files. It will start all these sockets and all the files. So this is a very simple thing so you should be able to start it stop it make it enable make it disable reload it and one very uh, say interesting thing about the system CTL is that you can sh see the low level details of unit settings and one more thing let me show you this path if you if you remember this I had told you that these are the three major locations where the unit files are stored. So let's go here at C system D system. So see it. If I go to at C system D system, you will find here a different folders because I am using currently I am using the graphical mode, right? So I will be going to the graphical target here. To see that which particular uh, say kind of mode I am working in or the target I am working in something like run level so if you can give a very simple command here system CTL get default this is a default target means when my machine boot my machine will be going in the graphical dot target this is it same stuff graphical dot target, right so I will go here in the graphical dot target folder and see here inside this these are your demons and other things so this is the location sorry you will find here a link to your graphical dot target the graphical dot target wants and in the same manner see default dot target is linking to the graphical dot target and one more thing which I would just show to you is the other folder the run level folder so if I go to run system D system and the last folder was the USR lib system D system. So actually, these files are copied. I'll show a very interesting thing here. Wait, so that you will get to understand how it works. So let me stop or I, I give the command system CTL disable SSHD. So see here it's at C system D system multi user dot target wants from this folder this SSHD link is removed and if I again give it enable you will see it cop it create a symbolic link to at C system D system my file and SSHD dot service so if I go to at C system D and system 
you'll find a file here sshd dot service file which is there sshd dot service it created a symbolic link from this file to this file sshd dot service so any file which you make active will actually be copied from your target multi user target wants if i show you this multi user target wants and for every service you have got a link file sshd so it's it's actually going to sshd dot service so if i cat this file it shows me the behavior this is the unit configuration file it shows me the behavior that how this service will behave one interesting thing is that i have a video on of this on youtube if you see there restart on failure restart sec 42 that means the sshd is by default configured in such a manner that if for any reason as it is a very important service if it hanged or killed or something happens to this service it stopped the system d will automatically try to restart it after 42 seconds so if i show you this let's check it out whether it's working on or not if i check the status currently it's loaded the pid is 6696 i kill this I killed it. If I give the status now, it stopped two seconds ago. So I have to wait for that particular seconds, those number of seconds, 42 seconds. I have to wait. So I'll repeat the command again. 14 seconds has gone by. Just wait for 42 two seconds. Activating auto start. See, just wait for 42 seconds. 25 seconds have gone by. So this is the magic of system D that you can configure your system units. 34 seconds, we are close. Just a couple of more seconds. 40 seconds, that's great. So now if I give the status command, it should show me active. It's active. Why? Because of the unit configuration file. So in case though it is uh, not there in your uh, official curriculum of Red Hat but I think you must be knowing this and in case you want to add it say 42 seconds for you is oh my god this is too much I, I want to start it after 15 seconds there is a very interesting command need not to one option of editing the file is first go to etc systemd system multi user dot target and then do a vim sshd dot dot service change the file fair enough you can do this no problem you can change it from here another is systemd has got a very interesting command for you edit edit hyphen hyphen full and the name of the service without knowing the actual location of the unit configuration file without knowing this location just give this command it will automatically open this change it to whatever seconds that you want to do so I get 15 seconds and then save and exit right save it save the changes and obviously it gives me the message also because I had changed the configuration of a unit file so I need to reload the daemon just copy and paste it and you can do the cat command also to see the configuration file of a particular unit configuration file it's very interesting command service see here it's now 15 seconds so again cat will do do it you need not to go to that folder at c system though you know it it's very good but there are certain things which makes your life much more easier so you you go here and then give this command it's fine Otherwise, simply give this command systemctl cat ssd dot service. So you have learned how to start a service by using the systemctl start command and the name of the service. You know how to stop a service by giving the command stop. Just change the service names. 
start it again make it enable after the reboot enable sshd dot service need not to write the service also you want to you don't want it to be available after the reboot make it disable i'll make it enable once again you want to read the unit configuration file sshd dot service you want to reload if if you have done some changes here sshd or a uh, more recommended option is the reload you can do a reload here and you should be able to edit the unit configuration file though it is not there in your rsc but it's good if you know this that you can even do a editing of your system configuration oh sorry unit configuration files so this is all you should be knowing how to start a service stop a service you have learned all these things stopping a service checking the status restarting a service reloading a service and the location of the unit files and uh, editing also which is very important that you can edit and you can see the low level details also say you want to know more about the unit file system ctl show ssd dot service see here it shows me all the configuration which are associated with this sshd service so my same restart parameter will be coming up somewhere here see restart 15 seconds restart on failure so these are the other parameters which can be passed in your unit configuration file so a low level detail can be also be find by the show command so this is very important chapter and please remember from the examination perspective whenever you start or configure a service like apache or anything make sure after starting it you should also always make it enable so even if you start the apache dot service which is good please don't forget to make it enable so that it should be available after the reboot please do it so, there, so that's a small day a small uh, topic for the day in the next topic next day tomorrow we will be learning about ssh what is ssh and how to control the ssh very very interesting topic so i'll see you again tomorrow bye bye take care your time